they were on time or 15 minutes late at Colfax, California, and then they were 11 hours late in Reno. Yeah, I know I saw that um, um, uh, 80 westbound was still closed last time I checked an hour ago, so it was closed since, uh, yeah, since, uh, since 1 a.m. All right, <clears throat> one more try. Uh, Henry, uh, Chuck, you guys around? If not, I, I guess I'll take it. Oh, good. There we go. Mike can take it. There's an official net control station, W7MS, the uh, backup uh, net control station. Yep, we're not hearing them. Okay, well, I guess in light of that, uh, don't know if you guys heard me, right, but he's on, his, uh, he's on his PRC because he's out of power, so uh, yeah, that's quite a few areas. All right, well, <clears throat> uh, I guess I will uh, start taking names and numbers, and uh, with that, welcome to 2023 for the 3974 Military Collectors Net. And uh, I've forgotten all of the uh, typical verbiage, but uh, anyhow, let's see. So far, I heard first, see if I got this, uh, Steve was the first person I heard, W6SSP, then Dave, W6MQI, and uh, then uh, we heard, uh, uh, yeah. Tom, OPE, WA6 OPE, and Bill, and 6 bct and Mike, W7MS. So, uh, once again, W6SSP, W6MQY, WA6 OPE, and 6 bct and W7MS. And this is NU6F, Reno, Nevada, T3, running 300 watts, and uh, the uh, receiver R390, 160 foot long wire. Okay, with that, over to Santa Rosa, W6SSP, NU6F. Well, thank you, Ron, NU6F, uh, W6SSP. Uh, using the usual, Collins uh, 75A1 uh, receiver and 32U1 transmitter into a dipole about 30 feet up, which is still in the air, <laughs> which is kind of surprising after the storms we had uh, this week. So, I will keep it moving. Over to Dave, W6MQI, W6SSP. W6SSP, W6MQI. Alrighty. Yeah, here in all stations, just fine. I even heard Mike. Um, boy, he was light, real light. So, but, uh, yeah, this is Dave in Livermore. And uh, we're on the K7, but I'm not a 75A4 receiver. And uh, let's have some antenna issues. I had to really crank up the antenna coupling a little bit beyond my normal setting. So, I think things are sopping wet. I tell you, man, we got hammered here yesterday, the last few days. My backyard was uh, basically flooded. Uh, and then, uh, 580, there were holes, all the other people were hitting holes. It was like a war zone on 580, and uh, a couple of the parks that my wife uh, manages here locally uh, had to close because of flooding. And, uh, yep. And more on the way. And I have a roof leak. Um, one of my guy points, the only one that's attached to the house, is to the garage, luckily, after 20 years, has decided to start leaking. So I gotta get up there today. Good to have a, luckily, it's not gonna rain at least for a few hours, and I get up there and uh, patch that. Uh, uh, of course, 
probably leaked a, a few years ago, but we still didn't ever get any rain. But anyway, it's leaking now. So, over to uh, Don, wa 6 w 6 Okay, uh, W6MQI, WA6OPE, and, um, well, obviously it's a new year, so uh, let's hope it's a good one. Not starting out as a good one for the net, though, but uh, probably, yeah, uh, probably snow and no power. I'm a little surprised that uh, at least one or two of them don't have generators or something where they could actually run and get on the air in case of a power failure. Or what, what do you do for heat when the power goes out? Oh, and uh, note to uh, net control, uh, W6JRY is in there. And I think he goes into number five, and W7MS, which is going into number six, I think. And I did not hear W7MS. I thought I did, but I didn't. So, uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, lots of rain around here, that's for sure. Boy, we haven't had this much rain in a long time. And, uh, but we, we got it, uh, not a major, major storm at all, but continuous rain for like uh, 24 hours. Didn't stop rain for 24 hours. Although it wasn't heavy, heavy downpours. It was just normal, what you could call normal rainfall. Uh, but anyway, yeah, things are damp. Damper than they have been in a long time. And, uh, I understand uh, Lake Shasta went up 12 feet the other day or something like that. I understand the water wheels going up. And, uh, boy, wouldn't that be something? Uh, see those two reservoirs flow again? You remember Governor Moonbeam said about Lake Oroville when it was way, way down, this is probably 10 years ago or so, he said, uh, this lake will never be full again. And the following year they were worried about the dam breaking because it was overflowing for the first time. <laughs> Maybe we can get a repeat of that, where the damn thing filled up like in a month. But uh, anyway, um, yeah, the usual regular this morning, TCM and uh, RBC, nothing changes around here unless it conks out. That forces me to do something. Many, many projects. Uh, generator madness continues. Uh, and I found, uh, boy, this is really weird. You get, when you start digging around on that basement, you don't, don't know what you're going to find. Even I don't know because I forgot I had it. I found a PE-162, I think it's an A. That's an early, early uh, gasoline gen military two-cycle generator, and it was for the BC-1306, which is SCR-694. And it's one of those typical two-cycle, except they didn't have any tubular frame around it or anything. It's just the uh, just the engine and the generator and the filter and connections, and they're sitting on four springs and uh, a handle on the top. And the weirdest carburetor you have ever seen does not have a float chamber. And uh, I've been trying to figure out what the hell kind of a carburetor it is, and I haven't figured it out yet. I have all the manuals I went through. That carburetor is not called out at all. So that that engine is really, or the generator is really an early one. And uh, it had a part or two missing, minor stuff. But anyway, I've been kind of putting that back together again. I'm gonna when when the weather dries out a little bit, I'm gonna see if I can get it to run. Looks like it should. But anyway, more generator madness continues here. And let's see. I will keep it going. Uh, I have here N6 BCT next on the list, and uh, <coughs> Net Control can pop in here on a break uh, if you want to uh, put JRY in the number 5 position or whatever. But anyway, I'll turn it over to N6 BCT, WA6 OPE. Okay, I'm not copying uh, an okay on JRY. Uh, <clears throat> anyone else uh, hearing Bill? Yeah, he's in there, but he dropped it. I think he's waiting for you. Oh, yeah, I just, uh, he was down in the noise. Okay, I guess uh, Jerry, take it. W6JRY. NU6F. Okay, NU6F and a group W6JRY. 
Well, very good morning to everybody. Another year cranking in here, I guess. And, uh, yeah, it seems like, uh, looks like, like we got some snow over. And on the eastern side of the year, it's pretty good there. Didn't see any uh, at our location here. It's been uh, a little war warm for it, and the snow level is up about 4,000, I think. Uh, something like that. We have a lot of rain here, and uh, I think about six inches in uh, the last uh, round of storms here and so on. It's about 39 degrees outside here, 53 in the shack, and uh, I've been on here for about two, three weeks, uh, various things going on, but anyway, see what happens with the new year. On the usual here, the uh, ART-13 with the uh, CM, uh, the uh, RPM-4 receiver. Um, I couldn't hear Bill. I just I could tell he was in there, but I just just enough garbage on the frequency there. I'm not copying him. So I did hear Mike a little bit too, but he's quite down. But I'll try to turn it to him and see what happens here. W7MS and the group, uh, W6JRY. Well, thanks, Jerry. Uh, I'm not sure who can hear me this morning. I mean, the uh, POC 515 RU20 uh, accent, courtesy of uh, Yugoslavia and Barack uh, Obama. Uh, uh, Good deal, Mike. W7MS. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the PRC 515 sounds great over here. I don't notice even the hint of a Yugoslavian accent. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I can imagine. I was thinking, I says, uh, yeah, I'm guessing Mike's noise level is ringing down. So at least you know for sure. It's not your imagination. Turn off uh, NV Energy and, uh, and radios work over there in Golden Valley. And, uh, yeah, let's see, going down, Jerry, okay, on the, uh, yeah, six inches of rain. Yeah, I know, I wish the snow level uh, was was up higher because, uh, like I say, we, it's, I think it's running around 30 degrees, and it was snowing all day yesterday, but it was uh, still in the low 30s, you know, I mean, the mid-30s, 33, 34, 33, 34, so the big heavy stuff. So, yeah, it messed up quite a bit. And I did notice my filament voltage on here on the uh, on the T3 was way up. I checked my line voltage. I'm 122. So, uh, I'm, uh, yeah, <clears throat> so NV Energy apparently did, uh, did some switching overnight. I only had lights blink a few times, but uh, um <clears throat> the local distribution here is underground, but... Still overhead wa transmission line to here, so who knows? And uh, Steve, yeah, I don't know what you mean about uh, yeah worrying about floods. Um, out here, um, there's uh, the uh, Swan Lake out uh, out just uh, just east of me, and uh, oh three years ago, I guess two yeah three years ago now, major flooding there that really messed up quite a few people. And uh, the older homes were uh, <coughs> several flooded, and uh, I'm sure they're, they're sweating it out this time. The storm drain canal uh, that uh, that one of the feeds into the lake is right here behind the back fence, and I noticed uh, instead of dry, oh yeah, plenty of water in it. So, and uh, yes, uh, <laughs> okay, Tom on generator madness. Yeah, I got my own generator madness going also. You know, it looks like uh, I may not be long here for net control either. My, uh, I see my uh, modulation uh, modulation plate current is way, way down. I don't know if it's just the mic 
uh, the E-104 or not. We'll have to look at that later. But, uh, yeah, the MJ set, uh, never-ending saga. It's, uh, you know, I've been work running it out there in the garage and uh, testing both the 500 and the 2KV side, and it runs fine. My only concern now is I have one bearing, the end bearing on the generator, that uh, runs warm, not hot. But within 10 minutes of run time, it uh, comes up about uh, 15 degrees uh, above ambient. So, I mean, it's never been so far over, uh, over 90 degrees. But uh, the other bearings run cool. And uh, tried flushing out the, uh, the grease again and uh, repacking it again. If I put light, <coughs> light oil in it, runs totally cool. But the uh, minute I put the grease in there, why it does, so I may experiment with some other grease. I still cannot find what the heck that uh, original grease was. And uh, viscosities are all over the place, but I ordered some new bearings, and I hate to say it, but I may end up taking the, uh, taking the MG set apart again and uh, replacing that one bearing if I can't get uh, anything else going. It's the original bearings on that generator which were still all packed in grease and like I say they hadn't been run and uh, turned fine but uh, no noise, nothing else but oh well, such are the foibles of 80 year, 80 year old restorations. And Dave, um, yeah, I'm guessing uh, with all that uh, with all that rain there in Livermore you don't normally get yeah, you got, you're probably getting a really good ground connection now, finally. All right, with that, I'll uh, pass it over to Santa Rosa uh, and Steve, W6SSP, and U6F. Okay, Ron, thank you very much. Uh, let's do a couple of things for me, and then somebody else to pop in real quick. W7MKA. Okay, Brad. Uh, oh, see, no, W7MKA. Oh, that's Bob up in Grants Pass. You were coming in so strong. Great. Okay, uh, <clears throat> I'll tell you what. Um, um, uh, Bob, why don't you go ahead and take it, MKA, and then uh, uh, pass it back down to Steve, W6SSP. All right. Uh, NU6 open the group, W7MKA. This is Al Robert and Grants Pass, and we got excellent signals up here this morning. Um, I'm running on, I'm on a, uh, a Harris URC-94, about my uh, newest military rig. And uh, uh, there was uh, enough cool sideband stations that were walking all over the uh, the BC-669 I had right here next to it. So it was the, the next closest uh, rig here that had a little more selectivity. But um, uh, yeah, there is everyone except Bill. Um, so, okay, and all the storm damage, we're sorry to hear about that. We've been uh, pretty normal here so far this year. A lot of rain, but uh, it's pretty typical for the, uh, the end of December. So, But uh, yeah, none of the uh, cold temperatures like we've had everywhere else. Anyway, back up down to uh, Steve, the uh, SSP to take it. This is W7MKA. Okay, Robert, thank you very much. W7LKA, W6SSP, good signal in Santa Rosa. And Ron, by the way, your modulation sounds just fine. Good carrier, too, so uh, you're doing okay. Conditions are really good, which is probably helping out quite a bit. And, uh, yeah, you know, we're, uh, there's quite a bit of flooding in the area right now, and it has been overnight, too. Uh, we've got a swing about 50 yards behind the house, and after that, I'll take a look and see if it's flooding. Probably not, but you never know. And uh, let's see, uh, oh, I want to mention the uh, little experiment I mentioned last week about using a uh, small speaker and a D104. Oh, that didn't work out very good. Oh, this sounded uh, very pinched. So, uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to pursue that any further. And uh, let's see, that I don't know if you heard my transmission about this, but. Uh, you mentioned Gurnville, and uh, not buying property there is probably a really good idea. And the reason for that, that uh, aren't aware of the area, uh, kind of being an ocean river, which floods whenever we get storms like this. And uh, many, many years ago, at a 
local swap meet, uh, a fella showed up with a quick one. Just absolutely crammed with columns for PBJ and seven cargo reformers into a flight, uh, a flight of the Oregon Rock and Lake Town. I mean, there are these things uh, underwater for a long time, covered with mud, and everything you can see was rusty, really, really rusty. I don't think there were any salvageable parts of it. W6MQI, W6SSP. Oh, 
good uh, on your uh, progress there. Boy, you're becoming the uh, ERC 106 uh, expert now. And uh, I wonder, if, uh, have you got the original set that you got, the original RC that you got that you're having so much trouble with? And, uh, about the P195 with the GRC-19. They say you've got to have two of them, one of them, so that you have one that works always. So that one guy, uh, you can troubleshoot. By uh, swapping modules to the known good one. And then at least you can isolate the problem to a particular module, and then you can go in and see uh, see what you can find. And of course, uh, on the P195, Everything is super compact, and I'm sure it's the same way on that here. And we can put the things on the old compound state. Ouch. For proprietary, uh, probably this map. So, yeah, lots of fun. Uh, let's see. Steve, super loud this morning. Sounded great. Hope you don't have a flood situation there. And, uh, yeah, you know, around here, Places in the country where they have like four inches of rain, two hours, something like that. That was to happen around here, man. The whole place would wash away. It would all be going out to go to the And uh, that'd be it. So, uh, and, and uh, I have to say it, but, uh, you know, Californians can't drive in the rain or the snow, that's for sure. And, uh, yeah, the freeways are all clogged up and overturned big rigs and all uh, yeah. Of course, overturned big rigs around here, the Bay Area, immediate Bay Area, that's, a, that's an almost everyday thing. And it usually happens at 5.30 in the morning or 5 o'clock in the morning or something like that. Of course, it's, in my opinion, it's mostly because the driver went to sleep. And, uh, <laughs> man, it never ends. Uh, let's see. Very good on uh, platter net. Uh, I'm sure you're using a laptop or some kind of a computer and then some kind of uh, uh, sound card or whatever to the computer for that. I think everybody on the Clatternet is doing that now. There for a while, I think there was, I uh, don't remember who it was, but it was one guy who was using a machine. And uh, I need to find that guy too, because I've got all the stuff, uh, including a, uh, a mic. Uh, a navy gray mic, 120 volt AC mic, navy gray, and I've got about the uh, the D mod and the mod for the GRC 46. So all that, all I've got all that stuff. I need to find that guy that wants to use a machine and go back in time and uh, <laughs> make him a happy deal, so he'll be a happy guy. So let's see here, just looking. Uh, it's the whole frequency. Just I flipped the thing on maybe uh, three or four minutes before it went on the air until so it warmed up. And, uh, time for me. Yeah. So it flipped on and I turned on the boot off and went on the air. It was amazing. Sure, as long as it is, amazing. Okay, I'll keep it going here. It uh, goes to H6BC2. N6BCT, W6JRY. Uh, yeah, okay, uh, on everybody. Uh, yeah, just a second here, I gotta, I gotta do something here, just a minute. Okay, okay, everybody, 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 everybody,
Not sure if you're tweaking there. I'll pass it back to V6JRY and U6F. Yeah, Twyell here was at the head of the stairs, and uh, she don't climb down the stairs with a cup of coffee here, so... <laughs> uh, perfect timing. <laughs> anyway, uh, very good on everybody. Uh, good morning to Robert. Copying right great on the PRC 515 there, and uh, I think Ron is about the strongest here. Sounding, pounding in here really good. And uh, Steve, Dave, uh, Tom, all good signals here. Uh, Bill was up uh, a little better that time. And uh, copying Mike, fine, good audio on the uh, PRC 515 and copying you fine there. Uh, signal isn't uh, real strong, but uh, with the, uh, what weather we've been having, um, it's... Um, knocked out pretty much all my power line noise here and uh but we haven't been on the air too much it's been darn cold down here in the basement i don't in this area where i'm at right now actually i got two coats on right now it's about 50 50 some degrees here 52 degrees down here in the basement anyway gosh i got a projects around here but nothing uh no activity on any of them most of my work area has been kind of a cold area here. And I actually haven't, <coughs> haven't been on the air very much neither. Propagation at times have been quite good uh, worldwide and uh, some of the different bands. Some old things on 10 meters, 17 meters have been pretty good. And of course, band by 20 meters it seems to be the bread and butter band around here. I'm looking for one piece of equipment, and I got stuff to trade. It's just for nostalgia purposes, is a BC-728, a nice working BC-728. I have one, I think I got it from Tom some time ago, it's more or less a parts thing, and that's not working and not going to be very easy to make it work. But uh, years ago, we, uh, the local radio club uh, was on 160 meters AM, and uh, then uh, some of the activities they would do around there, uh, the guys got together and got, uh, were getting the uh, BC-728 surplus, and then adding a small couple watt transmitter with it, uh, just for kind of a, uh, <laughs> a portable thing and uh, used to have a lot of fun with those things. And uh, so I remember playing with those quite a bit. And that was back in the 1950s. And uh, uh, of course, it <laughs> for, a, for a portable, it's, it's kind of big and whatnot. But uh, anyway, it served the purpose and it, uh, it was working out pretty good. It's kind of a... A receiver. It's receiver only with four uh, push button controls on the front of it uh, the, for four preset channels. I used to, uh, the Army used them in uh, Jeeps and I think mainly in Jeeps and uh, some of the vehicles and so on. They had a two volt, uh, or a, I think it was a six volt uh, uh, wet cell in them. So, I know Tom's familiar with them anyway. I don't know if anybody else is familiar with the BC-728. So anyway, let me keep it rolling here. And over to you there, Mike, on your PRC-515. At least uh, you're, uh, you're snow ready there. <laughs> and uh, I, maybe Henry and uh, the rest of them uh, are kind of buried there in snow, it sounds like. I didn't even know you got that much snow over there. Anyway, W7MS in the group, W6JRY.
Okay, Robert, don't know if you copied uh, over to you, W7MKA.
the garage or the basement that keeps giving and I don't know if you ran into anything on uh, like you say if you got my my drift on the uh, on the generator but yeah gosh I hate to take that thing apart and uh, I mean it's obviously it's not hot but it's out in the garage so it's pretty cold out there and uh, maybe when I bring it all back in it uh, it may start to get warmer than it should but I'm, <clears throat> it's such a pain to get that 140 pounds in and out of that, uh, um, uh, in and out of that TDE. I'm thinking I'm going to run a, uh, make up a cable and uh, <clears throat> put the generator around the corner in the shack about four feet away on a uh, Harbor Freight little uh, <clears throat> furniture dolly and uh, I can watch that generator, check temperatures, all that kind of stuff a whole lot better than trying to open up the case and all that. So I think that's what I'm going to do. And uh, but I'm not sure if you've got uh, any experience on uh, on bearings on the MG sets. Like you say, it's not making noise, spins free, but that one does run warm. And it's just odd that uh, <coughs> I drain all the grease out and uh, flush it and run it quiet and cool just with a little bit of residual grease it's got but pack it and it gets really bad steve okay on Guerneville and russian river you know i, I lived uh, it's about the same time as your, your guy with the truckload of underwater collins gear i had uh, that's about the same time i was living up there at cobb mountain i, I worked up there at the geysers and uh, i lived there and uh, up at cobb mountain uh, from 80, late 87 till 89, and then I moved uh, moved up to Colfax and I bought the property there and then built that place. But but yeah, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I can remember uh, the uh, routine flooding, and you'd always say, why do people even build anywhere around there? But whatever, you know, it's like at the time being, it was uh, probably cheap property and people can get it easy enough I'm wondering now on my uh, on my modulation here and yeah Dave I, I did, wasn't noticing I was close talking it when I normally don't have to but uh, yeah the uh, <clears throat> I'm wondering if I may have lost a 4-125 although the modulation seems to look okay but since my uh, filament voltage had jumped up a half a volt when I happened to notice it, and I noticed that my uh, modulation plate current was down uh, considerably less, I may open that up and find out that's the case. But there's plenty of audio. I'm only running, well, I'm still running 300 watts, but there's still so much extra audio, probably can't notice it with this thing. Dave, okay on uh, the... Uh, Clatternet, and uh, yeah, you've just about got the GRC 106 doing everything it used to do in the old days, and uh, that's kind of cool. And like uh, like Tom says, though, uh, yeah, everybody's using computers now, and I only had uh, I only ran ready for uh, Air Force Mars back early 70s for about two years. That's about the only time. And I had one of the old Pac Bell Model 100s, <laughs> and uh, but it worked. Uh, it was there uh, there in El Cerrito. <clears throat> the mailbox, the big uh, the big mailbox, and uh, let's see. I was trying to tell oh, you yeah, and Steve on that small speaker deal too. Yeah, like I say, it may, it may look good, but then. Uh, Gosh, it's uh, audio quality is just so subjective, it's hard to pick out. Okay, with that, I guess we'll make this a 73 round again, we'll, and it's uh, order again is Steve SSP, Dave MQI, Tom OPE, Bill BCT, Jerry JRY, Mike already signed, and uh, Robert to uh, tie it up on this round. So. <clears throat> Thanks, guys, for showing up, and uh, let's hope uh, hope the new year only gets better. I'm sure for the gang in Dayton, it's bound to get better when the lights go on. Okay, with that, Steve, take it. W6SSP and U6F. 
Okay, Ron, thank you very much, and uh, your modulation still sounds uh, really good. So, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Some of these things have so much headroom, like you say, uh, you can't really tell the difference. Uh, very good on all the projects. Pretty neat about uh, the motor generator sets and uh, Tom's uh, two-cycle dinosaur juice generators and stuff like that. And Jerry, I uh, don't have a BC-728 here. In fact, I don't even know what it is, so I'll have to look that up. Uh, noise levels here have gone way, way, way up. Uh, I don't know what it is, but around 8 o'clock, uh, noise levels go up about 20 dB. I suspect the uh, local homes with uh, solar cells on them, the sun just came out too, so uh, that was when the noise came way up. But propagation's really good, so um, pretty most of you really well. And um, let's see, projects, I wanted to mention one thing real quickly. Uh, reading old back issues of uh, ER Magazine, uh, yeah, electric, electric Radio Magazine, came across a really interesting article in the April 2000 issue about RAP, uh, the RAP system of uh, generating AM. And basically what, the, what he does is he uses a, uh, an FM, FM oscillator run that through a crystal uh, as a filter uh, and just uh, as the FM goes, uh, the FM signal runs up against the skirt of the uh, crystal filter, uh, generates AM uh, at very low levels but a very narrow band also. And I just, I thought that was really cool so uh, this week I may try to breadboard up something like that. It's pretty simple. And uh, so if anybody's interested in that April 2000 issue of VR, pretty, pretty neat stuff. That's it for me. I'm going to go check on the creek. Over to Dave, Mr. Clatternet, W6MQI, W6SSP73. Okay, Steve. See you later. All right. Yeah, the uh, BC-728. I never heard of that one either. I looked it up. Looks like... Uh, Looks like the old pocket radios the pilots would uh, carry uh, for rescue after they bailed out. That's kind of what it looks like. Uh, Ron, yeah, your audio sounds good now. Uh, backing off the mic. But it sounds like uh, you know that uh, the T3 pretty well. You got <laughs> yeah. uh, let's see, Tom, yeah, the, uh, I'm using, uh, using a laptop for, for, uh, ready, and, uh, software called FLP.
to it and brought up the power and slowly started connecting wire until I found a fault. And it never came up. <laughs> so it was all working. So then the, the problem is in the original panel. Um, and I have no idea what it is. Right now I don't feel like it. <laughs> um, and I do have a third amplifier that is uh, just turned into a part set.
time. The first time he was the loudest I'd ever heard him. But this last time, uh, I could tell he was there. Catch a word once in a while. So uh, conditions have changed that much. Everybody at BCT is the same as he was at the beginning, which is about four feet of the ground before. JRY blowing the doors off, uh, MQI blowing the doors off, SSP blowing the doors off, and then U6F blowing the doors off. And yeah, yeah I, I don't think you have a modulation problem at all. Have you tapped the meter? <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, yeah, no, I, and I don't have any distortion either, so I'd say your modulators are all working. Maybe you got a preamp or something that's a little low or off biased or something, but I don't hear any distortion. I've got plenty of modulation. Sounds good. You know, so, oh, and then, uh, uh, Steve, as far as modulation schemes, yeah, isn't it funny? They call it ancient modulation. And when it happens on that, there's a uh, bunch of schemes to make AM. Modern, uh, modern day stuff. You know, pulse width modulation and every other thing you can think of. Uh, to come up with AM, but uh, more modern broadcast transmitters, they do all kinds of magical stuff uh, to come up with uh, what sounds like AM. Doesn't look like AM, but, uh, you know, on the scope, necessarily. But it sounds good. Meets all the specs and better specs than uh, the old stuff, actually. Uh, anyway, any have a good, uh, everybody have a good week coming up. Hopefully we'll have our uh, patrol, wherever, wherever it is, next week. Get some power back. That's my situation, and I hope it is. Probably is. And, uh, yeah, I think I answered that question. Oh, BC-728, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, that's stated around 1940. They had a, that battery is a BB-54, it's a wet cell lead acid battery, 2 volt, and a 2 volt vibrator. <laughs> and uh, this is all in the case with a speaker, and the, and the battery is the largest item in the thing. And uh, so here's a, a lead acid wet cell battery, 2 volt, with a 2 volt vibrator power supply to power this little receiver. For four channels, no PFO, and uh, just uh, you know, you turn it on with the volume control and press the button, whatever channel button you want, one of four. Press the button for whatever channel that's tuned for, and there you go. Yeah, and I, I still have one, I think, and I had to, I had it working for a while, and it's in the same case as the PE157. Uh, vibrator power supply for, and works very similar to the power supply, that is, for the uh, uh, Hershey copy, uh, BC6, BC, oh boy, what was that, 5, SCR 511, yeah, BC746, I think it was, the Pogo stick, same case as that, anyway, a real antique, that's for sure, and, uh, but it was interesting and fun. And uh, the nice thing about that whole World War II stop, even though it's crude as can be, and nice and simple, that's the beauty part about it, it is simple. And if there is a proprietary thing, uh, it can be substituted with something else to show, like a transformer, or I have transformer or something like that, no problem. You can fix almost anything in a World War II set, except for armature. And that's only because we've lost the technology to be able to rewind. But, uh, Anyway, uh, let's see, I think that it, oh, I know what I was going to ask Jerry, well, next time, but 160 meters, I wondered why everybody, um, well, it's coming, yeah, Jerry's coming up, I'll ask the question, uh, what I remember about 160 meters back in the 50s is Loran, Loran Alpha it was, this giant buzz like you cannot believe, man, there's a whopper of a signal, and it just blotted out the entire 160 meter band. And uh, so I seem to remember there was something way back when, in like in the 40s or so, or pre-war especially, that depending on your license class, and I think there was an A and an M light, something like that, and uh, you could only operate AM on 160 meters. So maybe 
about the end of the net, it always seems to pick up. I think uh, just uh, propagation <coughs> seems to move into my, my line here. And like Robert, he was really strong here, um, his last transmission, but I think you said you put a little uh, boost on the end of it there. I'm trying to remember what you was using, maybe um, maybe the um, one of the Heathkit uh, amps or something put on the end of what you <coughs> was using there. Good on everybody, everybody's projects. It sounds like people have got their hands full with doing a lot of different things there. I certainly need to get back into doing some of it, that's for sure. And uh, Clatternet, oh, yeah, I, uh, I never did too much get into the uh, mechanical uh, uh, teletype stuff. A uh, little bit I did because I had a lot of the stuff. In fact, uh, that was one of my jobs at one time with Pac Bell was uh, teletype repair and maintenance and taking those things around back when the company, uh, you know, just rented them out to the radio stations and uh, newspaper and different places like that. Carry a spare around in the truck and they get routine. That's the problem with some of the earlier sets, like the 15s and then the 28 come in and uh, so on. That's what I remember working on is 15s and 28s and 12s, all mechanical stuff, needed a lot of maintenance. Uh, have, have your hands in trichloroethylene uh, a lot, you know. <laughs> I, I don't think that done us any good, and uh, messing around with that stuff all the time, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, kind of same old story uh, when you're you're working on it uh, you don't you come home you do other things on the on the radio of course that's one thing that's nice about ham radio is just so many different uh, options and more coming along some are dropping off but uh, still uh, here we got AM around and it sounds darn good to me uh, just uh, the way it is, but I can't think of any other hobby I, I've ever had anything to do with or know about that has so many different things that you can do. You get tired of one thing and do something else. Uh, 160 meters, yeah, I don't think there was any, there wasn't any, uh, 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 160 meters was open to uh, all classes. 75 has some restrictions on it, and I think that's one of the reasons uh, that uh, then that ended up on 160 meters back in the uh, 40s and 50s, uh, the local net. And uh, there was the Loran, and I re do remember we did have to change frequencies. I remember we was on 1920 for a long time, and uh, wh wherever the Loran was, uh, they, uh, they had to move, uh, move away from that. I remember even visiting one of the Loran stations over in Nevada, and I think it was down around, uh, uh, not, not Fernley, the other one down there, I'm trying to think of it, where the air, air, air base is now, uh, not a brain fade, but uh, yeah, just uh, classes A, B, and C could uh, operate on 160 meters, that might have been one of the reasons were some drawbacks to it because, you know, mobile-wise, uh, you had to 
yeah, we mount our own coils for the uh, mobile antennas and so on like that. And a lot of the radios didn't have 160 meters in a, on them, neither, but some did and some didn't. But that was uh, for a long, long time, the local uh, radio club, which had started in uh, the late 30s and then uh, went quiet during the war and then uh, back again in uh, 45 or 46. And I think I joined in 1948 when I was, uh, what, 13 or 14, something like that. But uh, that's the way it was. And I haven't really listened on 160 a lot here lately. Uh, things have been uh, with the noise and so on like that. Noise floor getting uh, higher and higher. But I used to do a lot of 160 meter operating and DXing and so on on 160. So anyway, I better get out of here. Uh, that's all out of me. Let's see, Mike is signed. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, Tom, all on the uh, 728 thing. <coughs> yeah, that was one of the radios that uh, the club uh, played around with. That was a project thing, uh, and of course, uh, all that surplus. Another neat thing about uh, uh, back in the 50s with the stuff that you could get your hands on. <laughs> Those days, we were tearing it up and modifying it and all that kind of stuff, of course. But... Uh, uh, kind of a no-no now. <laughs> okay, uh, I guess it's uh, over to Robert and then uh, back to Ron. Thanks for doing the nap now, Ron. We're still coming in here with a 3368. Just really uh, great signal in here. 73 is all, and let's uh, hope uh, this, this year is going to be better than last. So 73s, and over to you, uh, Robert, if... Uh, we still got propagation here. W7MKA in the group. That's W6JRY. We'll be listening out. Okay, and you 6F. I don't, uh, let me take a listen. I didn't hear Robert in there. Let me listen again. Okay, I guess he's signed. Yeah, conditions are, conditions are, change a lot, a lot of deep QSB and fades on guys, but uh, all right, well, yeah, and uh, going down the list, yeah, I'm asking on the, the total type stuff, I was just trying to think, no, it was 67 to 69, I was uh, on the Air Force Mars with the Model 100, and yeah, there at PG&E, uh, yeah, like you're saying, Jerry, we had the uh, Model 28s, and then later on the KSR 35s, and that was one of the regular deals. And I forgot about the carbon tet, and I some often wonder why my skin, uh, my hands, uh, were always so cracked, dry, split issues. But probably was all those nasty solvents we used all the time. Didn't pay any attention to. But uh, <clears throat> and interesting on 160. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Uh, that was about the only time I was on 160, I believe, too. Also was, uh, uh, I take it back, 80s, early 80s I was, but uh, that was about it. And, uh, Tom, yeah, here it is. You've got Dave's intercom sitting down there in the basement. So, uh, yeah, send him a picture. <laughs> And yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try that again. I was trying to find any kind of a lighter grease, but I uh, just haven't found anything yet so far. But it's obvious that it follows the uh, viscosity of the grease. And that's why I purposely I blew all the excess oil out with compressed air to try to run it with just a little bit of grease in there. But <clears throat> it's, it helps, but not as much. So. Yeah, that's why I would like to go ahead and find a lighter grease, pack that one, and uh, with that, and then, uh, yeah, have it set up there in the house, um, outside, so much easier to get to. That's a real <coughs> nightmare to get in and out of, and I never know what's going to go wrong, but so far, uh, yeah, that looks good. It's 80 years old, and 3,600 RPM, I think that's a lot of stress on stuff, so... Who knows? And, uh, yeah, it's interesting, Steve, on the uh, FM to AM. And like uh, Tom says, nowadays, oh, my gosh, they generate, uh, yeah, pseudo AM <coughs> out of uh, digital streams of stuff that doesn't even sound or look like audio. But it works. 
All right. <clears throat> and Dave, then again, congrats on the GRC 106. And uh, now, if anyone needs parts, at least amplifiers for the 195 or the GR1, GRC 106, we know where to go. All right, guys. Thanks a bunch for uh, uh, showing up for the first net of the year. And, uh, yeah, hopefully the real net controls will be back next uh, next week. 73 is 39.74 is clear. We'll move to the net and back to regular amateur use. 73s.